Sprightly Storytime presents The Princess and the Pea by Hans Christian Andersen Illustrated by Jonna Christie Once upon a time, there was a prince who wanted to marry a princess, but only a real princess would do. He traveled all over the world to find one. Yet everywhere he went, things went wrong. There were plenty of princesses, but how was the prince to know whether they were real princesses? There was something not quite right about them all. So, the prince returned home quite unhappy because he would have liked very much to bring back a real princess to meet the king and queen. One evening, a terrible storm struck. Thunder boomed, lightning flashed across the sky, and rain slapped against the castle windows. It really was frightful. In the middle of it all, came a knock at the city gate. The old king went to open it. Who should be standing there but a princess? Or so she said. Good gracious! What a sight she was in all that rain and wind! Water ran down her hair and clothes, into her shoes, and out the heels. Yet she claimed to be a real princess. We'll soon find out about that, the old queen thought. Without another word, the queen went straight into the royal guest room, took all the bedding off the bed, and carefully placed one pea on the mattress. Then, she took 20 more mattresses and piled them on top of the pea. And then she put 20 feather beds upon the mattresses. Way up on top of these, the princess was to spend the night. The next morning, the queen asked her, Did you sleep well, my dear? Oh, exclaimed the princess, no, I hardly closed my eyes at all. Heaven only knows what's in that bed. I lay on something so hard that I'm black and blue all over. It was terrible. The queen smiled, the king laughed and the prince's eyes grew wide. The family could see that the girl was a real princess because she had felt the pea through 20 mattresses and 20 feather beds. No one but a real princess could be as delicate as that. The prince wasted no time in asking her to marry him for he'd found his real princess at last. As for the pea, it was put in the Royal Museum, where it may still be seen, unless someone has taken it. There, that's a true story. All right, so we have listened to The Princess and the Pea, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna quickly jot down all the characters, all the settings, and things like that from the story. So, we're going to start with the characters. And so we have the prince. The king and queen. And then we also have the princess. Okay, then we're going to go to the setting. So the setting takes place in a far away land. 
add a castle. Good. The problem was the prince couldn't find a princess. Couldn't find a princess, and then they put a P under the mattress. to prove that she was a princess, okay? The solution is she was a princess and that they got married. Now we're gonna watch a fractured fairy tale about the princess and the pea, and we are going to see if there are similarities between the two. So we'll go back to YouTube and do the princess in the P. Um, okay. Hell indeed. And now, it is beginning to rain. Woe is me. Don't despair, my darling dear. You deserve a princess. As true as can be. And while the Pinky Prince was at his whiniest, and the storm had reached its stormiest, there came a knock at the castle's front door. The prince opened the door to find the soggiest, muddiest, least princessiest looking young woman he had ever seen. Hello. Yes? I got separated from my traveling companions during this terrible storm. May I please come in out of the rain? I'm sorry, but we're only allowing entrance to true princesses. Good day. But the woman in the door would not give up. She knocked even louder this time. Yes? I am a true princess. Please, let me come in out of the rain. The prince was confused. Could this soggy, muddy, now grumpy young woman truly be a true princess? Of course you could come in, Muddy. I mean, my dear. Oh, thank you. I'm so tired, drenched, and hungry. I've barely slept at all on this trip. What I really need is shelter for the night. But, Mother, she... Yes, of course, of course. Why don't you get something to eat and warm up by the fire as we prepare a nice room for you to sleep in tonight? Thank you so much. But, Mother, why would you... Don't worry, darling. I have the perfect way to test if she's a true princess or not. So while the soggy princess dried out, the queen directed her servants to prepare a bed with 20 mattresses. More. More. Then she added 20 soft down comforters. More. More. Then the queen took a single tiny green pea and placed it under the massive pile of comforters and mattresses. More. No. A true princess is sensitive. So if she feels that tiny pea under all of that, then we will know she is a true princess. Why don't we just call the kingdom she says she's from and ask them if she's a princess? This is the only way! The next morning at breakfast, the prince and the queen anxiously awaited the arrival of the princess. Finally, she dragged herself down the stairs with what the prince thought were very promising bags under her red swollen eyes. Good morning, my dear. How did you sleep last night? Sadly, I didn't sleep well at all. Thank you for the room, but there was some sort of rock or lump in those mattresses. No matter how I tossed or turned, I couldn't get comfortable. I never actually fell asleep. Hooray! Oh, you passed the test! What? That was all a test! Only a true princess would be sensitive enough to know the pee was there. You passed! And now we know you are a true princess! Whoa, whoa, whoa. I showed up on your doorstep drenched, filthy, and exhausted. And you decided to test me? Um, yes, it was all a test. But you passed, so hooray! And now you two can get married! Yes! Hooray! Married! Ha -ha! No! We're not getting married! What is wrong with you people? That's the meanest thing anyone has ever done to me! Why would I want to marry someone who treats women that way? Um, because I'm a prince. What was it you said to me last night? Oh, right, I remember. Good day! <gasps> but wait! You're the only true princess in the land! Yeah, but you're not the only prince! I'm off to find someone nicer! And she did find someone nicer. A kind prince who respected her and didn't try to put her through silly, stupid tests. They lived happily ever after and never ate peas.
right, so now we're going to come back to our, um, our chart, and we're going to compare the first story of the Princess and the Pea to the second story, which was a fractured one. So our characters, they're still the same, so they can carry over to this side. Our setting is still the same, and essentially our plot is the same, and our problem is too. So our problem is the same, but the solution's a little bit different, and this is where it varied. The solution was the prince told the princess, um, told the princess about the pea, and the princess was not happy about it. And so then the princess left and found somebody else who treated women better. So that is where the story changed, is the prince and the princess didn't get married like the original story, but the prince told the situation, and that's what made it different. So that is why that's a fractured story, because it's, not, it's got the same elements, but it has a different ending.